Welcome back to our house or welcome if you're new here. We have a very exciting guest today. We have the very lovely and chic Jennifer Scott, who is the author of our book choice of the month here at home with Madam Chic and also author of other great books such as at, um, Lessons from Madame Chic, Polish Your Poise with Madame Chic, loved all of them. And her latest book is Connoisseur Kids. And she's also the owner of the blog and YouTube channel by the same name, The Daily Connoisseur, and fellow homeschool mom, right? Correct? Yes. Welcome. So glad that you're here. Thank you, Karen. It's such a pleasure to be here. So you're in California right now. So, you know, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, you know, how you're doing over there. Yeah, um, I'm fine. Yeah, we just got the, or as we're filming this interview, we just got the orders last night that we're on lockdown. So oh, we wow. can't go anywhere unless we go to a bank or a grocery store or a, a doctor's appointment. So it's it's pretty crazy. But, you know, like you mentioned, we already homeschool. So I really yes. do feel that <clears throat> our life is uh, set up for this right now. You know, it could it would be a lot harder. I know a lot of people who don't homeschool and they're kind of struggling right now, you know. Uh, yep. with that transition. So I'm very grateful. Yes. And you know, it's funny, when I picked your book out, I didn't realize how much time we would all be spending at home. <laughs> so I feel like it's the perfect book pick and talking about how to be joyful, content with what's going on. I think it's just the perfect book choice for right now. I know everybody that I know that talked to, that I talked to that read it, loved it. So I'm so excited that we can talk a little bit more about these concepts and, you know, get the word out for moms. Like you said, for some, it's kind of business as usual, but more so, you know, try not to leave the house. But for others, it is disruptive. And now they're um, homeschooling if they didn't expect it and can't leave the house. So I think this is good. Some of the things that we're um, going to talk about. So thank you for doing that, for taking oh, the time. Yes, of course. Okay. So I wanted to ask you, because you talked about in the book, trying all kinds of different things. And I think we've all been there, right? Like the KonMari, the Feng Shui, all the beauty regimens and dieting. But, you know, we all want that poise, like you talk about in your books, right? And I never heard this connection before. And it is, I, it was like an aha moment. You talk about the, the key piece there, the missing piece we forget is being present, right? Actually, being present helps you to be more poised and have that poise in the midst of chaos when things are not going your way. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that, that, that connection? Yes. Um, I think, uh, I, I struggled a lot with anxiety and, um, just, I think what a lot of people, we, we operate on so many different levels. We have so many uh, things to do, children to look after, meals to cook, the house to take care of. Some of us work as well. And, and we're, we're always in our head thinking about what's coming next. And I yes. think that, you know, God made us that way for a reason, because we actually do have to do all of those things. We do have to multitask and juggle things. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we're not constantly projecting, okay, what's, what's happening next so that we're not actually in the present moment. So I would find myself not enjoying my life at home because I was worried about the grocery list that I had and the to-do list that I had, and I have to do this and that. And the, you know what I mean, where your head yes. just keeps going. So I find that when I have anxious thoughts, and this is also really helping at this current time when we're dealing with, uh, you know, COVID-19, is to just remain present, right? And yes, the house is messy. And yes, dinner does need to be done. But right now, I'm talking to my child, or right now, I'm whatever you're doing, even if you schedule a rest time to just read a book on the sofa for five minutes. <laughs> yes. You know? Um, that that's extremely important and, and being present allows you to be grateful that right now, everything is okay. You know, the world is not falling apart right now in this very moment. We're okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. I always ask, I do that with my kids. Are you okay right now? Right now? Are you okay? Cause you know, their mind will race to, you know, just even fights with their sibling. Are you okay right now? You're okay. Yeah. And even right now, like, like everything that's going on, maybe your to-do list is shorter. You're not doing carpooling. You're not picking, you're not doing errands, but you could still not be fully present, even just being home right now, right? You could be caught up with the news cycle and not paying attention to your kids. So that's very important, like you said, right? Just stop, 
concentrate on what you're doing right now. That's really the key to having poise, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, great. Well, I'm so glad you talked about that in your book. I think that's so important that ladies, um, you know, really focus on that right now. So I wanted to ask you before all of this, how, you know, you talk about the 10 item wardrobe and, you know, the importance of feeling good, looking good because you feel better. It's just, it makes a big difference. And I want to ask you how we can change the internal dialogue in some ladies' heads, especially homeschooling moms that are maybe all at one income. Oh, that's superficial. I don't want to spend money on makeup or clothes or perfume. But I, I understand that now that's even a tougher sell with everything that's going on. So maybe we could just focus on just getting dressed for the day. Even if you have nowhere to go and you're stuck at home, how important is it to just get dressed, do your hair, things like that? Well, I would submit that most ladies, uh, even what most ladies, even watching this video have nice clothing in their closet that they never wear. Yes. And so a lot of people do, they'll have a beautiful blouse. Maybe sometimes you will go shopping and you'll see something and it's on sale and it's pretty and you think, well, I'll buy that because maybe one day I will go to a baby shower or um, a special event and I can wear it but it never gets worn, like maybe once a year. And meanwhile, every other day, um, uh, pe people are really dressing down lately. So you, yes. you notice, I get a, in a lot of trouble for this on my channel, but I talk about the yoga pants trend where, you know, ladies oh, are yes. every Don't day. Don't even get me started on that too. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm so with you. Okay, good. Because I, I think that it's actually quite damaging. Um, for not only your morale, but also society in general, because I think that we should look presentable always. We should put an effort into our appearance. Now, a lot of people correlate this with spending a lot of money, and that's, mm -hmm. it's not true at all. It's not true. You can go to very poor places in the world where people don't have very much, and they still look presentable, because all it takes is uh, just a handful of things, a handful of dresses or whatever it is that help you look presentable. And that's why I talk about the 10 item wardrobe um, because people hear that and they think, what, that's extreme, that's radical. Why, you know, they think that I'm kidding or that I'm lying or, but I've been doing the 10 item wardrobe for over a decade now, well over a decade. And um, the thing about it is, is that for people who are not familiar with it, you choose 10 core items per season. It's a capsule wardrobe. And you round it out with extras. So um, extras are things like coats, t-shirts, special occasion dresses. Obviously that's not gonna mean your core items. The core items are what you wear every day. And this helps you to look presentable always. It also helps you to not waste money in the long run because a lot of women are just perpetually shopping. Even if they're on a budget and they don't wanna spend money on it, they are. They'll go out and they'll see something at Ross or they'll see something at even the thrift store. And they'll just keep buying it because it's cheap, you know? Yes. But mm -hmm. when you get intentional about your wardrobe and let's say, okay, I'm going to buy one nice dress this season. And yes, it's going to be a bit pricier, but it's going to last me for a long time and I'm going to look good in it. And I'm going to wear it regularly. It all depends on the, on, on the budget basically. But when you commit to actually getting intentional about your wardrobe and looking presentable always, um, your life changes and you do save money in the end, you really do. Because I used to just shop all the time. There was no rhyme or reason, like nothing. I would just fill my closet. I had so many clothes and I I never knew what to wear. Yes. You know, I, I would just, and I would never wear my nice clothes. So when I first decided to do the 10 item wardrobe, I got rid of um, like 70% of my wardrobe and I just started wearing what I already had. And I forced myself to wear my nice clothes. And it's very uncomfortable in the beginning because you think, um, well, what if I ruin it? Or what if one of the kids, my, I have, I have four children. And, um, so ages nine, seven, three, and one, and the boys, the younger boys, they're the, the three and one year old, even this morning, I was wearing a really nice, um, uh, sleep shirt that I'm going to actually like review on my channel. I was trying it out, see how it's like a bamboo silk thing. And both of them are like rubbing their noses into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you know, but yes. even if that happens, it's okay. Because why? It's important that our children see us looking presentable. Because when you look presentable, you are saying, I am a competent adult. You know, yes. I'm able to tackle things. You can trust me. You can rely on me. 
And when you can't get it together, you, you can't get out of your pajamas or you're in sweatpants or uh, yoga pants, sorry, all day long, long after you've worked out or you don't even work out with no, you know, it's, it sends a message. And we want all, all of us want our children to grow up to be competent adults, right? Yes. And we want them to get good jobs and to look the part and just be good citizens. And so we have to model that, even if they are the only ones we see all day. Exactly. So <laughs> you would say even in this time, you know, like my friend said, it's not a snow day. Like you should still get dressed, even if you're home and you're not going anywhere. We're modeling it right to the children, how to act during yes. tough situations. Still yeah. get up and get dressed, right? <laughs> yes. And it's even more important. Some people say, oh, it's only the children. Well, actually, they are the most impressionable people that you meet probably throughout the day, you know? Right. So it's like, why do we get dressed for some stranger we're trying to impress when we have young children in our home who we are shaping and molding and are very impressionable? And we make this impression on them every day. Why They are actually the most important people to dress for as far as I'm concerned. Right. And this is a time where we're instilling habits. And I think we think a lot about behavior, but not just like just this kind of stuff, the modeling stuff for them. Right. So yes. very important. So let's we're spending a lot of time at home more so than usual for some people. So let's talk about you talk a lot in the book about rituals, like little home rituals to define the morning time, afternoon, evening time. So for moms who you know have little children and the days seem to run together or, or now with everything going on, people that are staying home more and the days just kind of run together. What are some ways that we can, you know, have these little rituals throughout the day? Well, I think it's important to focus on, and I believe the book is actually broken up in this way, to focus on the pleasures of the morning, the pleasures of the afternoon, yes. and the pleasures of the evening. And I know that just naturally in my mind, that's how the day is broken up. So in the morning, okay, what do I look forward to in the morning? My coffee. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. That's a pleasure. So when I wake up, you know, it's like maybe the baby woke me up earlier than I wanted to or whatever. I can look forward to having my coffee, you know, whatever it is. If you take a little walk in the garden and look at your plants in the morning with your coffee or whatever it is. Right. Look forward to that and plant those little treats for yourself throughout the day. In the afternoon, it could be taking a lunch break and or maybe laying down to read a little bit of a book or something like that. Uh, I love the evening. I love twilight because bedtime is almost here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, twilight yeah. comes, I'm like, oh, bedtime is almost here. And I love it. I look forward to it. And, um, I, I read to my girls every night. Um, so we're like, we're on, uh, I think it's book five of the little house series, the long winter. And I, we've been reading it for months, you know, and I, we, I just read one chapter a night to them, but I really look forward to that, you know, and it's just that type of thing where what is the pleasure of each each part of the day. So when it gets hard, because we all have those, you know, in the afternoon, most of us go through a slump where it's like, okay, now we have to, we have to cook dinner and we have to clean up and we have to put all the school stuff away. And that can be hard. So give yourself little pleasures to look forward to. Maybe you listen to an audio book or a podcast or something while you do all of that. Give yourself those pleasures, those kind of benchmarks to get you through the day. Yes, I, I really agree. And I love that the read aloud, it creates these familiar rituals for the children that they're going to look back on and it's going to be yes. some of their favorite memories. So it's good for you and it's good for them. So you have a lot of great suggestions in this book. I love that. So also you had some suggestions on kind of bringing culture into the home too. Right now, nobody's really going to be doing a lot of traveling, mm -hmm. you know? So um, you talk about how you can bring culture to your home and a lot of us are not really going out on date nights anyways we have a lot of young children and you know I have read how doing new new things like going to a new restaurant or listening to new music it does energize you so you talked about in the book how are, what are some things that we can do to kind of bring that into the home especially when there's not going to be a lot of that for a while yeah that's a great question um well, what we personally like to do is, well, I love classical music, so I, I play that every single day, and I involve the children in it as well, and so, what composer is this, you know, and we, we don't study it formally, but I always have it on in the background, with the hopes that um, the atmosphere will set their affections, and I believe that with adults as well, your atmosphere sets your affection, so if, if, if people are listening to 
crass and vulgar pop music all day long. Well, that's going to set their affection for that type of music. So uh, I think most people don't do that with children, but, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> You know, sometimes yes. when women are driving in the car, they'll just have like the top 40 radio station on playing that music. And do we really think about that? Like what's in the lyrics of that music? Is that culture? That's pop culture, but it's not, it's not true culture. So I right. like to listen to uh, beautiful music, like classical music. Um, and as far as artists go, um, you know, we do an art study for our homeschool and we study a new artist every week right now we're on Botticelli. And so we study the artist and we put the art up and, and even putting beautiful art in your home through the form of a poster, or I like to order canvas reproductions of famous paintings and I have them framed and put up in our home. Just things like that. Yeah. Just studying beautiful artwork, surrounding yourself so that your atmosphere that's your affection. That's a Charlotte Mason kind of philosophy right there. But just surrounding yourself with that beauty, reading poetry and doing that and not allowing ourselves to be dumbed down, which is uh, something else that I talk about on my channel, which I think our culture is in danger of because, um, you know, this is a, like a heavily television watching, binge watching uh, yes. culture where people are not cultivating their minds and challenging themselves. So... Yes, and you do this great thing on your channel too, where you do the chic assignments, like so yeah. for women that maybe didn't just didn't grow up that way, and they feel clueless about it. You know, besides the book, you monthly right give out these challenges. Can you tell us a little bit about what kind of assignments sure. you do? Yeah, it's funny. Right before we shot this, I shot the check-in for the chic assignment. But basically, every month on my channel, I assign four things, and it sounds like oh, daunting, like it's cool, but it's not meant <laughs> to be. It's meant to be fun. So, for yeah. example, this month I assigned uh, Chopin's Nocturne in C sharp minor, and I, I gave a little YouTube video to watch. And then um, we're studying William Butler Yeats his poetry, and so it's just encouraging people to just just giving them a direction that we can all do it together, so it's fun. And then I have two other assignments, um, enjoying our food, we're doing that this month because I feel like there's a lot of neuroses around what we eat lately. And then uh, getting our wardrobes ready for spring. So that was the chic assignment for this month. But I do it, yes, on the first of every month and I do a check-in later on in the month with the hopes that we can all kind of do it together and, and support yes. each other with it. So I do want to ask you because I'm just really fascinated with the whole French way of eating. Um, do you still keep up with that and those habits that you brought over from over there? Yes. So um, my my French philosophy is to deprive yourself not. That's uh, my first book is Lessons from Madame Chic, and, and if you enjoyed At Home with Madame Chic, I encourage people to read Lessons because it's it's really the thing that started it all, and it's it's like my my baby of books. It's like my yeah. my favorite book that I've written, you know. And so uh, one of the, cha I think it's chapter, two, chapter one in Lessons from Madame Chic is called Snacking is So Not Chic. And chapter two is called Deprive Yourself Not. So um, the French don't snack, or at least my French family didn't, the one that I stayed with. And I learned that the first night that I was with them because I was just in the habit of just snacking all day long. You yes. know, it's like the 10 item wardrobe. Like I just bought all the clothes. I snacked all day long. Like there was no <laughs> discipline. Yes. So the first night that I stayed with Madame Chic, I was hungry because I didn't eat that much at dinner because I was stressed. I'm like, they didn't speak English and I'm at the, the dinner table with them. It was really formal and I was stressed. I didn't really eat much. So after I got into my pajamas, which were not chic, and you learn about that in lessons from Madame Chic, I tried to sneak down the hallway to go to the kitchen to get a snack. But Madame Chic kind of stopped me. She said, where are you going? <laughs> and I, like, I kind of lied. I said, I was just going to get some water. She said, I'll get it for you. So she got me some water and I was kind of sent back to my room. It was clear. There's no snacking in that household, right? I could not rummage through the refrigerator. So that really opened my eyes to the fact that I was snacking so much that I was dulling my hunger. I was never hungry. And yeah. when a meal came, I was not hungry for it. And so I kind of ate it, but it wasn't satisfying. But when you when you don't snack, now some people have to for health reasons, so I'm not giving medical advice on this, but I'm just <laughs> saying that for myself, when I don't snack, then I actually enjoy my meal more, you know? So I will have like maybe one snack every day, but I'm not snacking constantly all throughout the day. And then when I do eat, I don't deprive myself of anything. I just eat what I want to, so. And you yeah. keep your weight. I mean, you always look great and trim yeah. and you, you've you had four babies and yes. you always lose the weight. So you're just doing this, just eating the French yeah. way. Wow. Yes. 
That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you about Madame Chic. Madame, Ma I sound like a Madame Chic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. And by the way, what are you drinking? What tea do you have? I made a Darjeeling tea, but it is the weakest tea because I was in a rush. I don't. I can't. You can't see it because I can't tip it over. It's like practically water because I was. I didn't boil the water long enough, but I'm pouring it in because I. I didn't want to lose my voice like for our interview. So it's yes, started. I need to get dainty cups because I just have Starbucks cups. And that's nice. Hey, that works too. <laughs> well, okay. So I told you I was going to do your oolong. You have great tutorials, by the way, on your channel. You have this oolong latte, yeah. but I realized that this was blood orange. <laughs> oh, is it still good? Well, I didn't want to add the milk because I didn't think orange and milk. Right, the orange. citrus and the milk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but just like this, it tastes really good. So oh, good. I'm loving everything you talked about in the book. I've ordered it, all the makeup stuff. I ordered it. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? It was written a long time ago. I can't, it's, that book was written um, like nine years ago or something. So a wow. lot of the stuff is not available anymore or, or, you know. It's funny I found it on wrote, eBay. There was oh, yeah, did? like okay. the Bobby Brown eyeliner. Yes. I love it. Yeah, yes, I found it, it on eBay. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> and then I like downloaded all the music or put it on my YouTube playlist. And I like that you recommended not just like class, you have like some yes. Spanish, you know, yes. or all of it. Like you just you're very eclectic with yes, all of it. It's not all just very classical. Classic. Yes, right. <laughs> but it's all very good here. Okay, so I want to test you. Because you do get a lot of heat on your channel. You know, you, you talk about, you praise motherhood and homemaking, femininity, all these things that could be a little countercultural in some circles, you know. So how do you deal with that negativity, you know, and hate comments? Like even looking at your books, I love them all. And I would look on Goodreads. I couldn't believe anybody would leave a bad comment on it. But, you know, there are th those women out there. Yes. So how do you stay classy through it all? Well, when I first started this, I started my blog in 2008 and I wrote my book in 2011 and, and it did take me a few years to just kind of get over the shock of like the mean comments that I would get or the bad reviews. The, the most hurtful ones were the reviews on my books, but I now I got, I completely get, I'm over that now. I don't, I really don't care because, um, <clears throat> I just find that I, I don't know. I, it's just part of human nature. I yes. think for some people to, to just do that, even the other day, I, so when I talk about yoga pants on my channel, this is the most controversial thing I talk about, except for my critique of the Super Bowl, which stopped oh, Yes. <laughs> that was a great video. What can everybody say about that? <laughs> I won't that? even go there. I won't go there. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but, but apart from that video, I, the, the thing that I get the most, um, uh, kind of negative comments about are, is my stance on why we should not wear yoga pants, um, you know, unless you're exercising, if that's what they want to wear them for. So um, I even had a woman on my blog, I didn't publish the comment because I, I don't give, I, I'm not giving a platform to these people. Yes. When, if you can, if you can disagree with me in a pleasant and intelligent way, I will publish your comment. And I do, you go on my blog, lots of people disagree with me. I'll publish their comments, but when they kind of get mean about it, I'm not going to, I, I don't ever want to hear from you again, basically, you know? Yes. So I had one woman say, she said, Jennifer, I'm older than you, and I wear yoga pants for X, Y, Z, this reason. She could have left it there, and I would have published her comment. But then she said, she, she got into it a bit more, and she said, you know, you're a sour-faced, dowdy, homeschool mom, and she's, like, attacking me. Oh, no. <laughs> attacking how I look, attacking the fact that I'm a homeschool mom. And I'm just, like, I, I feel like saying to these people, why do you care so much about your yoga pants that you are willing to kind of demean yourself to, to leave a comment like that? You know, especially know. as we age, we should have more dignity. And even when we disagree with people, we should carry ourselves with dignity. And, and so to go there, it's like, do you really care about this issue? And I feel like, why do you follow my channel? I mean, why are you? <laughs> reading, I don't get it either. Posts. Why people? I mean, and they're so like, don't judge me, but now I'm going to yes. judge you. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. That's the biggest thing. It doesn't make the number sense. Number one thing I get called is judgmental. As they're judging you. As they're judging me for being <laughs> judgmental, I'm like, you are the biggest hypocrites. Now I'm judging you again. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> no, but I mean, the, the thing is, is that I have I have a platform and a blog, and I encourage all of these people with opposing ideas to create their own platform and their own blogs where they talk about why it's wonderful to wear yoga pants every day and all that type of thing. Go for it. 
Yeah, you're not yeah. going to go to their channel and yeah, get off my channel. Them. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes no sense. So yeah, how would Madame Chic handle it? Um, and like, and I want to test you too. How would she handle, you know, what's going on right now and people hoarding and being so mean at the stores, you know, how, how would she, ha- what would she do? Well, I, I don't, I wonder about them because the one thing, uh, there's a few things that I didn't adopt from them. And, and one of the things, thankfully, was that I do buy in bulk and I do prepare a lot. I'm, oh, yes. I, I make freezer meals. I always, we have a big family. We have six people. So yes the kids eat a lot. So I have a ton of food in my pantry and, uh, it's always been that way, but Madame Chic would walk every day to the markets to get fresh. Well, that would not be good right now because there was never a stock up of food and, and they relied on the fresh markets right outside their house, which could shut down, you know, in times like this. So, um, I don't know how they're faring with this, but you know, to keep my motto on my channel is to keep calm and remain classy. And that's certainly what she would have done. And to not project this worry on the children. So to behind the scenes, get everything going with your husband and, and get, make sure you guys are good. But, but to just handle it with dignity. I mean, it's crazy how people are. I was in the grocery store the other day and they announced that toilet paper was available on aisle 14 or whatever. And I thought, I split second, I was just about to walk out. I had just paid and I was like, should I go and just like, just <laughs> debase myself by trying to like, grab like Black Friday? Yes, it so is I like Black of, Friday. I went back just to see what the response was. Everybody flocked in on it and everybody, and they're coming out with piles. And the store, the store owners were saying, um, or the employees were saying two per person, two per, per-. they didn't care. They kept walking. I'm like, did you not hear that they said two per person? You know, you're wow. going to get rejected at the counter. And it's, it's just, so while everybody is acting uh, kind of panicked around you, we have to remain calm and yes. dignified and everything. I did a video on my channel of what to do if you run out of toilet paper. <laughs> yes. I love that video. That was really great. Ideas that I didn't think about. And I hope we don't run out of like feminine products as well, but you have great alternatives yes. too. That was a great video. And you know, that's the one thing I did struggle with the French way of eating. I would love to just walk to the farmer's market and get a fresh bread, you know, but we have six kids. That's a family of eight. You know, we go grocery shopping just twice a month because it's just too much and then yeah. putting it away and everything. So we went to the grocery store and we got two carts and got a bunch of dirty looks, but it wasn't hoarding for us. We're just that's just alive. your average grocery. Sh- I know. Yes. So yeah, it's just crazy out there. But yeah, I wonder how how they're doing out there. But as far as just being classy, dealing with it all, you know, just keep your cool, you know, and just think of others, right? Yeah. Being present, not thinking yeah. like in the future that mm-hmm. it's just if you don't have that toilet paper roll, all you know, yeah, life we'll, is over. We'll cross that bridge when it comes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And check out her channel because she has lots of great alternatives in case you run out of toilet paper. Um, so yeah, kind of along the lines too, with what we were talking about, you know, what do you think? Cause you also homeschool, is that more acceptable in California now? Like how would you, um, you know, rec- how would you tell ladies to handle it when people are critical of their choices? You know, you're in a, we're, we're kind of have these public channels. We expect it, but for ladies out there who, you know, they might get it from friends or family mm-hmm. criticizing their choices, having more than two kids or homeschooling, you know, what advice yeah. would you give them? Um, well, I would say for all unsolicited comments and advice, just yes. to smile and thank them and change the subject. Yes. Very good thank, advice. Thank you for your thoughts on that. Yes. So what did you do yesterday? You know what I mean? Because don't yes. entertain. These people feel that they need, that they know better, that they know how you should run your family and how you should educate your children. And, um, they don't know better. You know best because you're the mom. So just thank them and be polite and then just change the subject. And if it's a close family member who disagrees with your decision, just a kind but firm word that, you know, I appreciate your concern, but we're, we're good. We, you know, and they'll see over time. Uh, you know, my, my family was accepting definitely of the, of our decision to homeschool, but I could tell they were a little bit of like, cause this is, we we're first generation. I mean, I was not homeschooled and I didn't know anybody who was. And, and so, and my, my father is a college professor, you know, in academia. And so I, I could tell that, that, uh, and then my husband's from England and they, 
don't do that over there. I mean, they do it, but it's like, yeah, no. he went to a private boarding school, like when he was eight. So for them, it's extremely foreign, you know? So um, everyone was like, okay, they kind of like <laughs> how long it would last, but they really do see the good benefits that, that it's had. And now, I mean, my parents were like, I'm so glad you're homeschooling. Now you're totally set up for this disaster. And yes. we are, you know? Yeah, I wanted to ask you too, because I didn't read it, I think, in any of your books. How did you meet your husband? Did you meet him overseas or here? Here. So he, um, he, his family had a business called London Soul, French Soul in the UK. It was a shoe business that sold ballet flats that they, his mom designed, actually. And uh, so I met him through work. I actually worked with him in that business. And that's how I met him. So I met him here in California. Oh, how funny. You yeah. ended up marrying a foreigner. <laughs> yes, know? I know, right? <laughs> you thought I would have married a Frenchman, but I've always, <laughs> funny enough, I've always loved the English. I'm more of an Anglophile than a the Francophile, which is funny. People don't really realize that, but I am. So is there some cultural differences that you deal with? In oh, your yeah. Home? Oh, yeah. Still, I mean, we'll be married, I guess, 14 years this year. Um, communication. Yes. Yeah. And so I finally learned and he finally learned like when we just don't understand, I'm just like, you know, this is a communication problem. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he, he, the, the English are very subtle and we're more blunt in America, you know, where I'm just like, you yes. need to tell me how you feel instead of allude to it briefly and then walk away. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's that yes. type of thing. But other than that, there's not much. Uh, I think he is very, he's very gracious and has adapted to my way of living a lot. But yeah. I remember like when we first got married, things like the duvet, we have a duvet on our bed and they don't put a sheet, a top sheet with the duvet, that type of thing where I was like, oh, okay. And then I, <laughs> just little things like that where I finally just accept, you know, the English way of life, so. Yes, and he, he goes on your channel, you guys do videos sometimes, yeah. do you still do those? We do. He doesn't go on as much anymore. He never, I always kind of twist his arm. I'm like, yeah. I love him. Most husbands, yes. You know, and, and I, I tell him, I'm like, the readers, they really love you. And, and he, I don't know, he's very shy about that thing. So every time I ask him to come on, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe I'll get him to go on a little bit more, but. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure that those are very popular. The husband wife videos are always very popular. Yeah. So, okay, last but not least, I want to ask you, you know, are you planning on writing any more books or any other projects in the works? I am. I'm working on something right now. So, but I never talk about what I'm working on because I don't know, it's kind of like, it's like your baby. You know what yes, I mean? You don't want to say the name that you want to say anything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I am working on something new. So do you have any advice on balancing it all? Any time management skills? I always like to pick everyone's brains. What's their little way of doing things? As far as time management, um, yeah, I mean, just getting in a routine and being very efficient. Like, for example, with uh, homeschooling with my with my children, um, I, I was struggling in the beginning when I had to teach both of them at the same time. But now we're in, I mean, it's like a finely oiled machine. We sit down for math and one of them works on, well, you know, when my husband's here, actually, he does math with my older daughter. But when he's not here, one of them works on um, the review while I work on the new concept with the other one. And then then I switch and I work on the new concept. You know what I mean? It's like that all day long, not just with homeschool. But in my mind, I've come up with the routines for the day where I'm, I have to start thinking about lunch at 11 and I need to get that because 12 will come and I forgot to put it in the oven or, you know what I mean? So yes. it's just really about uh, figuring out in your day, okay, what's not working and uh, how can I fix that, you know, and, and then fixing it and then sticking to it. And so you schedule everything, I'm sure even time to work on your projects and you try to stick to that. Yeah, it's not rigid. Like I don't have a time schedule. Like okay, at 10 a.m. we're gonna take a recess break, and I don't do that. But I do have a general time blocking of my day, uh, where I usually work before the children get up, and then I uh, and then we get up, and then it's breakfast and chores, and then we do school, and then try to finish the main stuff by lunch, and then we have lunch, and then we do kind of the dregs, like the last of what we need to do. And then it's like rest and, and clean and get ready for dinner. And then it's like my favorite time of the day, like <laughs> bedtime. Yes. Time to sleep and then read. So it's all blocked out. And then I also work after they go to sleep. So I'm just in that kind of crazy time period right now where, um, because I work, um, 
you know, and I, and I do it from home and I don't want it to interrupt my day. So I do it before they wake up and after they go to bed. So I'm just yes. kind of in that phase. And, and you talk a lot about the importance of starting the day off right. That sets the tone for the day, right? And you having your little routine. So, you know, when you have your babies, are, do you still keep that morning routine or does it change? It changes. And I can't even remember what the routine is that I wrote in At Home with Madame Shoes because <laughs> that was written like when I had like one baby. <laughs> so who knows what I wrote? I don't even yeah. look at it. <laughs> That's so but funny. it's changed a lot since then. Let's just say that, you know, yes. but, um, but the point is to have a routine, you know, so I will, I try to wake up, um, at between five and five thirty. So I wake up, I have a glass of water, then I read my Bible. And then after that, I usually work until they wake up. And so I'll go on my computer and I'll do stuff like that. So it's changed. I used to do things like, oh, it's stretch and I do whatever. Yeah. I don't do that stuff anymore because now I do that later because I find that for me, I have to fit all of my work in before they wake up. You know, it's funny. I know the books are older, but I just found you not, you know, like just a couple months ago through um, Marianne LeCure, her oh, channel, yeah. in the, the montage that you had. So this is all new for me, and I'm sure it's new for a lot of ladies, too. May, or maybe I'm just old with it. No, it, no. <laughs> People are discovering the books all the time. They're, they're all, they are kind of old, though. <laughs> so then let, I have a couple questions then, because it's kind of like, a you know, where are they now? Are you still in the townhouse? <laughs> in that same townhouse? No. Okay. In fact, I've moved twice since then. So that was in Santa Monica. Yes. And then we moved to a bigger house in Los Angeles, and then we, we ditched that one. And because we wanted to become debt free, so we moved yes. out of the city. So yeah, I'm not in the townhouse anymore. And you have courses on that, right? How to be yes. like chic, debt free, something. I like do. That. I I have really affordable courses. I don't charge a lot for my courses because I. It's more important that people take them than yes. that I make a fortune on them, which isn't going to happen anyway. So. <laughs> so I do have a debt free course. Where can people find the courses and all that information? Well, if you click on any of my YouTube videos. All of the information is always in the description box. You can find links to my books and my course e-courses um, and that type of thing. So that's the best place to find it. Or I have my, my blog too. You can always find it there. My author website, jenniferlscott.com has more on my books, less on my courses. So. so I do want to ask you, I'm sorry, I keep asking you questions. How did you go from, I know you were an, an actress, right? In Los yes. Angeles. How did you go from that kind of career path to stay at home, homeschooling, you know, um, yay, women at home? How, how did you make that transition? What were those influential pieces? Oh my gosh, that's like, it's such a long story. <laughs> <laughs> I have changed a lot, let's just say that. But I, yes, yes I, I was an actress and um well, not a very successful one. I did a lot of theater and my job was to do Shakespeare for children. I was in a touring company. So we toured around Southern California and that was actually really great. And I, that was a really good period of, of my life. But I also did commercials and music videos and things like that. And I did not like what was happening in the entertainment industry. And I decided I didn't really want anything to do with it, which was crazy because I worked so hard to get my Screen Actors Guild card and all that. But I kind of walked away from it and I, I went back to my first love of being, wanting to be a writer. So I always wanted to be a writer when I was a child. I don't know what happened, why I started going into acting because I started doing plays in high school. But, um, and so, yeah, so I, I decided to be a writer and then that's when I started my blog and then I wrote my books and everything like that. So, but you know, God just kind of changed my heart a, around that time. And um, I wasn't, I wasn't really, I wasn't really living for God, like when I was in my twenties and everything. Right. <laughs> so that's like a whole other topic. I don't I know can if relate. it's appropriate for your <laughs> channel, but I, yeah, anyway, so that, that kind of happened. And, um, so a lot changed and I just started listening to, um, stop stifling my natural intuition, which is something that I was really doing a lot there. And it's like, things weren't going right something was wrong, you know? Yes. And I finally just kind of let go of what society expected of me. And just, it's like, what do I feel is right here? You know? And right. I started listening to that more. And I think it is innate in us women, you know, to want these things and want to be at home and want to raise your children and want a yeah. husband that takes care of you. But like I said, we're just so brainwashed with all these messages 
it's really just like you said, just letting all those things go and embracing what's inside. Yeah, that, that's perfectly fine to want that. You know, it's funny because it's, I don't know. I, I feel like the narrative of um, women's empowerment is a lie because if you you are empowered, if you agree with like the kind of mainstream narrative of of what female empowerment is, but if you choose a different, more traditional path, um, you are suddenly not empowered, but you are um, bad for women and you are a hater and you're this and that. Yes. <laughs> you know, so it's like, but I thought that it was female empowerment. I thought that we could all choose what we should, would want. That That's what I found with my Super Bowl critique. Um, I mentioned that I thought the performance was extremely inappropriate and it was, uh, it was horrible. <laughs> thank you. Cause I feel like I'm crazy because then, um, you you won't you just won't believe the comments that I got. I had to disable comments on that video. But. You know, and and I'm Hispanic. You know, my mom's Mexican, my dad's Cuban, and seeing all these like yeah, for I feel so proud of my Spanish. I'm like I was so ashamed. Like no, no. Yeah, I, well I know I'm half Panamanian, so I'm half Hispanic, and and everyone was calling me a ra they, I was called a racist white lady, and I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I am a Latina. You know, and and I'm like, what? Eh, I don't even want to go. Yeah, but only one viewpoint. Point was that I didn't just jump on the bandwagon of oh, this was amazing, and and so I was completely like, just totally attacked over that. Is that scary? Like that, that in America, stripper poles and crotch shots are okay and should be celebrated. It's yeah, it's no, scary. they were oh, it didn't Jayla look great because she's fifty. That's what they're focused. I'm like, if I'm 50 and my child's on stage next to me and I'm doing that, that's like shameful, you know? Yes. So I think your channel is super important because you are willing to take the heat to make those videos and, you know, just being countercultural in that way. So thank you. And I'd say thank you for on behalf of all the ladies out there that really appreciate your channel and come to it. And it's just a breath of fresh air. Thank so, you. Thank you for doing what you do. Cause I know it's not easy. I can Thank imagine. You. <laughs> so I know we're, we're almost out of time here, but I just wanted to tell you that um, yesterday I was on a search for a thermometer because I thought um, my kids had fevers and there was none in the stores. I called all the stores. Nobody had it. Um, I finally found one, a neighbor on next door sold me one, but you know what cheered me up during all of that? Your story about your thermometer story. <laughs> <laughs> just that story made me laugh out loud was that in at home with madame she i don't remember which or, one. no that was in lessons that was in the in first lessons one. yeah I, I heard that one on audiobook <laughs> i heard that one in the car and i i i rarely laugh out loud anymore <laughs> when hearing a book but i laughed so hard so even with all that stress i just remembered your story thank you <laughs> So people have to read that book. They need to hear that story. And the other story that I just was crying laughing, maybe you'll share. I don't know. It's a little bit embarrassing, but the drama, drama queen underwear at the dinner party. <laughs> oh, I'm yes. cracking up so hard. With, that was in this one, right? No, I think that was in Lessons, Lessons from Madame Sheik. All the embarrassing stories, I think, are in the first book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you need something to laugh this uh, this season, yeah. read Lessons from <laughs> Madame Sheik. That book is awesome. And you know what? Your book on um, poise, what was it? the title of it? I Polish Your Poise. With Polish Your Poise. You know what's so funny is I get anxiety sometimes. Too. I had an accident on a, a highway, you know, decades ago. But, you know, it still kind of will trigger sometimes. But just how you said, like, just sit up straight and just, you know, have good posture. I found that just doing things like that, I felt more in control. I didn't have that anxiety. So that book really helped me with so many things in my life, so many different good. ways. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I encourage everyone to pick it up. And your latest book, Connoisseur Kids, that's kind of like a manners etiquette book for kids, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just ordered it. We're going to do it as our, our next read aloud. Our book oh, great. Aloud. Yeah. <laughs> You're oh, reading good. cozy stories. I'm going to be reading to my kids about, you know, the manners. <laughs> but you do it in a very gentle way. So I would yeah, thank you. I think they're really going to enjoy it. So thank you so much for taking the time to be on here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure.